Well, good morning, afternoon, or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here, and welcome back, guys, for another daily cryptocurrency market update. And if you are new around here, every single day at 1 p.m. UK time, we release an update just like this one to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space and also the markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. We are, of course, as we do most Sundays, going to be taking a look at the week ahead in terms of economic data. It's going to be a big one. We've got CPIs, we've got PMIs, we've got GDP stats coming out. And we're going to be looking at all that towards the end of the video. We will, of course, be reviewing, as we do always, the Bitcoin chart. And we're still very uncertain in the short term. There's definitely the scope for a broader correction. You are in a bit of a dangerous zone here, you know, in regards to the fact that you could complete a head and shoulders. This is going to give you targets down here, which is going to coincide with a deeper ABC correction. But taking a zoomed out version, we still think, actually, this is pretty healthy. This is typically how markets arise. And actually... You know, we had uh, Ben from More Crypto Online on the show yesterday. Great guy. Um, in my opinion, one of the best Elioticians out there. Um, and he spoke actually about the psychology of a wave two um, and the kind of nature of it. And that made a lot of sense. And kind of a lot of what he was seeing from an Elliotician side of things, technically at the market, really kind of matches up and marries our. Uh, own technicals, uh, which is sort of price action based. Um, so very interesting. If you didn't see that, go and check that out yesterday. Um, we've got a number of other things economically to uh, look at, but I actually want to start the video off with a clip from Tika Tawari, actually talking about how banks and institutions lie and manipulate the market. And I believe they are doing that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, everything is going to be tokenized and digitalized. And some of the cryptocurrencies that are here today are going to play a vital role in that. And I believe right now there is accumulation in the likes of Chainlink going on and other cryptocurrencies. And this is all um, going to lead to an eventuality of a regulated industry in the United States that will allow this um, space to thrive and grow from $1 trillion, which is where it currently is, to the you know tens, if not potentially hundreds in the future. So let's go ahead and dive into that clip. And then we've got another clip, again, talking about really what's going on here. And, and, and we, we, we've played this previously of talking about how Bitcoin's a distraction. Then we're going to get into all the sort of technicals and, 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 and economics. So let's go ahead and play the clip. On September 12th, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire any one of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Dimon speaks, people listen, people listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe, that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. It says he'll fire anyone that buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying His it. company is buying it. So, ir- it's just, I mean, so unethical. Right. Okay, George Soros. George Soros. In January 24th, <laughs> price was already down, calls Bitcoin a bubble, says Bitcoin is the worst, you know, the worst investment in the world. Don't buy Bitcoin. Don't buy Bitcoin. Basically throws uh, gasoline on the fire yeah. at this point. And then what do we find out? So he says bubble here. It drops 44%. Right. And then here in April, for two months later, guess what we find out? Yeah. His $26 billion family office has approval to buy cryptocurrency. Right. And you only, we only knew about it publicly right. here. Here, And yeah. this is the kind of thing that George, George Soros is famous for this, talking yeah. the sterling down. Yeah. And what did he do? He stole the pensions of all the little people. Yeah, made a billion. Yeah. Okay. So then here now, Goldman Sachs, this again, February 7th, most cryptocurrencies will crash to zero. Now, I remember when they said this in February, and I had, through my network, I knew that Goldman Sachs was setting up a crypto trading desk. Absolutely knew they were setting up a crypto trading desk. And I then, remember you telling me that. Right. And then, uh, of course, they were denying it. No, yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we're not. No, we're not. Yeah. Price falls down 27%. And then what do we find out? We find out here, uh, they say BTC zero. And then we find out just before May, new trading desk. Not only that, they put $400 million to buy a cryptocurrency trading platform shocking you know that is an old clip and actually Tika Tawari was the original uh, reason why I got into Chainlink uh, and I'm sure some of you may have had a similar introduction did very well for us um, but I really want to play that clip because you know right now there's a lot of uncertainty in the crypto space uh, and it's it's largely due to a kind of 
dark cloud that is regulator- regulatory uncertainty. However, this will pass, um, and there's a bright, really bright future ahead of uh, the crypto space, and hopefully um, in line for us crypto investors. Now, let's dive into the markets. I was going to play another clip, but we'll leave that. We'll maybe cover it tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long as it's Sunday. You know, we are still a little bit uncertain on the short term. However, I'm going to stick to the weekly, and I'm going to look at some other markets. So, Bitcoin's had a bit of an indecision week, and it's right around this sort of 30 moving average, which we like to use uh, when we look at stage analysis. You know, we would still um, say this is a stage two. We told people not to short here, and the same reason we said don't short here. Uh, and ultimately, there is still a number of patterns that we're looking at that could uh, and are likely to lead us to the upside. Okay, but there is still a downside scenario. Looking at the weeks ahead and how things closed on Friday, let's jump over to the stock market. You're getting buyers coming in here. Is the pullback over for the stock market? Maybe. Has it found support? Perhaps. If you look at the NASDAQ, which we think is going significantly higher, it's found its support. If you look at the likes of Apple, it's found support. Microsoft, our golden child, and this one of our greatest trades this, this, this year. Uh, Tesla, Coinbase, which we ultimately think is a $1,000 stock eventually. Uh, gold got hit really hard, but it's finding a little bit of strength. Um, and then the flip side of that is the dollar. Look at these wicks. This is a real hammer for the dollar. So have we got a brighter week ahead of us? Well, there's going to be a lot of economic data that's going to depend on that. The bond market is still getting absolutely murdered uh, and property isn't looking too sharp, but all seems to be finding a bit of strength. That was the close on Friday. Of course, Bitcoin trying to get back above this. You know, in a bull market, you really want to see price action maintained above your 30 weekly moving average or where we don't, you know, trade uh, moving averages. We just use them as a kind of indicator for relative strength and weakness. So could be looking for a bit of an interesting week ahead. Um, Talking about the week ahead, let's actually just jump straight to it. So Monday, you've got nothing. I believe it's a bank holiday in the UK. Not sure if it is in the United States. Um, And then Wednesday, you've got US PPIs. Price to rise 0.5% month on month, down from 0.7, so continued deflation there. You've got the Fed minutes, which is going to be interesting for the US dollar. You've got UK GDP, uh, expectations to be 0.1. I wouldn't be surprised if this comes out as a beat like other countries out there. Um, ultimately, you know, we spoke about economic data that supports our theory in regards to rates lagging, and we, we don't think the demand destructive event is on the doorstep. We think it's it's got a while to play out. This is how we've been bullish in 2023 and, and, and very accurate on it. The economic data that you got was the non-farm, which shows a stronger than expected economy based on the jobs report. And that, I think, filters into our whole kind of macro thesis on on, on why we're long spot the market right now um, and, and think other markets are going to continue to do quite well. Moving on to Thursday, uh, after the UK GDPs, you've got US CPI, initial jobless claims. Uh, also, they reckon prices on a month-to-month basis are going to rise to 0.4 and 3.8 year-on-year. Uh, from 0.6, so the bit of deflation on the month to month, uh, and of course, uh, 3.7 year on year uh, annually. Um, core CPI forecasts um, coming down slightly, which is uh, good, but then of course, jobless claims actually potentially on the rise. And then we've got oil inventories. Um, moving on, we've got Chinese CPI and PPIs, and then we've got US Michelin consumers. So it's going to be interesting. The markets for me are. And we'll, we'll get a bit more information on this as we see the futures market open tonight. Looking like they want to maybe set up for a good week ahead of us. Um, and I'm going to take that, um, not to the bank, but but look at that as optimism. Again, in the short term, when it comes to Bitcoin, to sort of bring things right back to what we started on. I don't really have too much of an insight here. Um until you you get to either the upside or you start to make your way to the downside of this range and that's going to coincide with a deeper correction on the cards or potentially you know this correction being over and now you're looking for that sort of explosive upside and of course altcoins will turn on the back of that you know ethereum actually doesn't look too badly although saying that it doesn't look brilliant um yeah we'll see how the, the 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 sort of markets open up um Talking about inflation, which is really going to be the big one on the CPI, you can see that you have expectations here actually at 3.6. The TE forecast is 3.8. We'll get sort of everyone's forecasts from uh, Bloomberg Terminal closer to the time. 
Could be an interesting one. True inflation showing us that you do have a bit of a slowing down and actually decline in inflation. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. O oil, just like the jobs data, just like a lot of things right now, double-edged swords, because actually oil has got had an historic correlation between when it goes up, the um, stock market goes up, typically because it's a, it's a broad sort of barometer of the um, economic environment. We actually looked at this as a stage one breakout or stage two breakout, sorry, and this could just be a retest. And oil could now be well and truly on its way to continue um, inclining, certainly going into winter. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Just a little bit of interesting economic news also. Uh, total US debt jumped by $500 billion in just 18 days after hitting $33 trillion. According to Zero Hedge, to be exact, the US debt is now at $33 trillion, $513 billion. This means the US has added $28 billion of debt per day for 18 days consecutively. That's $2 billion an hour. It's just mental. Uh, and this is why bonds, or one factor why bonds continue to get hit really hard. And actually, I think that for me, this is why we are long real assets and we would put Bitcoin and crypto in that um, because they represent something against the system that is a proliferation um, system. Uh, and it has to be inherently given its fiat nature. Bankrates.com, US mortgages on the 30-year fixed national average are now at nearly 8%. Pretty mental. I have a mortgage on a property. Um, I'm pretty lucky that I don't on others. And yeah, I think the floating rate um, for some of the big banks is, is round about there in the, in, in, in the UK on like 25, 20 if you want it to fix. Um, Talking about de-dollarization, the US dollar was used 46% of all international payment transactions in July, a record high, but BRICS, it's actually a de-euroization rather than a, a, a de-dollarization. The dollar's really gaining strength as the kind of king of the fiat systems, the king ugly. So on that note, guys, I think we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, let's see what the way that markets closed on Friday, but we're going to have to see how the futures market opens could set up for a good week ahead. We'll see what's going to happen. It's kind of a bit of a make and break point for Bitcoin and crypto. Um, the only thing that I am long actually is GBTC. It's still trading at a 19% discount. And actually, I could see a move towards perhaps $25 uh, for that, to be totally transparent. Um, and on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you do want to join the Patreon and take part in our weekly meeting, do consider checking the links out in the description. And yeah, we'll see you all in the next one, guys. Have a smashing Sunday, and we'll catch you in the next.